My name is Jan Tumler. I'm here at the Red Cat Gallery in downtown Los Angeles with Los Angeles-based artist Dave Hulfish Bailey. Bailey's had numerous solo shows throughout Europe in recent years, but this is his first in Los Angeles since 2009. The exhibition is titled Hard Scrabble. We are standing at the entrance to the exhibition, and I always think of this particular vantage that one gains walking off the street and into the gallery as a kind of establishing shot. What do you expect people to get from it? One of the things I hope they get is something that suggests the terrain but doesn't fully disclose itself from any given place. Immediately, we encounter a kind of maximal density, both of forms and potentially of concepts. Spatially, there's some things going on that contribute to that, the way you are looking at the backside of this particular video projection on a model of Sputnik and the receding layers. I think of exhibitions as more landscapes than collections of objects. To a great extent, I think this demonstrates your interest in landscapes, more specifically uh, the American landscape in as much as the American landscape comes to us overcoated with mythical ideas about possible societies, possible futures. And in this particular show, you're looking at four sites. The epicenter of one is the former countercultural compound of Drop City in southeast Colorado. There's a, a mesa near a butte called Werfano Butte on the Werfano River. There's some work relating to Slab City, which is near Salton Sea in Imperial County, California. And in the middle is a project related to the Oglala Aquifer, also called the High Plains Aquifer, which goes underneath several western, midwestern cusp states from Nebraska down to the Panhandle country. So those are the four primary clusters in the exhibition. You mentioned the counterculture. In all of these sites, you're mapping out a series of forays into these territories that could begin with the earliest uh, frontier expeditions and then pass through the hippie moment when those same sorts of adventures were taken up within the context of subculture. A lot of my interest in the sites around the counterculture has to do with the historical preconditions that created places where these kind of life learning experiments could actually happen economically and practically. But I'm also interested thinking forward into the present, the legacy of the counterculture, especially around experimental learning. And that has to do with an interest in pedagogy and how the habits of mind have been sedimented, as well as the habits of using the land. This bulletin board lays out your modus operandi in terms of how exactly the connections are made. And you have a number of different methods for sort of making uh, these connections. The bulletin board is primarily a research space in which I play out a number of different strategies from the kind of analytical and historical looking at connections between places but there are also a lot of places where language games or nonlinear thought experiments start to connect. The various uh, connections that you're drawing sort of spiral outward from these sites. They don't follow any one particular pattern of thought. I might want to add into that the idea of um, using material systems and environmental systems as a connection machine. There's a variety of logical machines that build out the connections as you move around the bulletin board and even within a, a particular collage, we could call it. So a lot of these connections actually are superimposed upon each other. For instance, the name of the river, officially it's the Purgatoire, named by French trappers, but it's known locally as the Picket Wire, which is an evocative name picked up in the film clip shown over here on the Sputnik model, which is from The Man Who Shot Liberty Balance, a John Ford film from 1962. The Sputnik is important in the history of American education because 
Up until the Russians launched Sputnik, American education was largely built on progressive values promoted by John Dewey and others. But as soon as the uh, Russians get Sputnik into orbit, American education policy turns very sharply toward science, math, and other quantitative fields. The proposal embedded in the, the wind tunnel model here is to find a way to use prevailing conditions, in this case the wind, to trap debris uh, that would allow you to actually create writing on the landscape that would be visible in satellite imagery and or from airplanes. And so much of this interior landscape of the United States is only seen from the air or in satellite by a vast part of the population. What you've chosen here in terms of language has a specificity that is also historical that concerns our immediate history and not geological history. There's a special word, toponym, the name we give to places. In this case, by mistranslating Werfano as child left behind, I'm making a bit of a critical wink back to Bush era education reforms, the no child left behind era, which really up the ante on the kinds of quantitative testing in public schools. A lot of the work has that character of a proposition, and it's a space in which ideas can be tried out. But at the same time, it's very important for me to think of them as concrete thinking processes. I'm actually very interested in trying to think the world concretely rather than abstractly. I'm much more interested in articulating differences that exist in the place itself, the distinction between space as an abstract continuous support versus place as an articulated set of relationships and ecologies and feedback loops that uh, coexist with uh, each other and existing time. So here we have two more works uh, right behind us that bear the word proposal or proposition and or prototype. That is a proposal for a community library built in a squatter's camp famously called Slab City in the Salton Sea in Imperial County, California. That piece relates to the physical preconditions of that library as well as the legal preconditions. And a lot of the volumes from the law library have to do with water and land use, but they also have to do with more abstract things such as governance and practical uh, concerns of the residents. It provides a set of inscriptions upon the land that affect people living there that are notably absent from the library as it currently exists. So this piece is a prototype for a mobile cinema. The main structure of it is cobbled together from agricultural equipment. I'm trying to take materials that are instrumentalized in relationship to the land and repurpose them for another way of thinking about that same place. The imagery in the cinema is footage I shot during the eclipse in the path of totality. And I chose within that path the deepest point of this vast underwater aquifer. It images the alignment of the celestial, the sun, the moon, the earth, with things we don't normally see underneath the surface. These disasters are also the enablers of uh, social imaginary. They also enable new possibilities uh, in terms of rethinking how land is used and how uh, humans interact on that land. There are cases of the gap between the human knowledge base and the human agenda for the land and the carrying capacity of the land itself. 
and that opens up that territory for other kinds of experiments, and it's those other kinds of experiments that I'm primarily interested in. I'm remembering that you described your work to me by using the analogy of a car crash, mm -hmm. and this moment of hyper-consciousness that sort of occurs right before impact, it sort of signals a capacity mm -hmm. to manage great amounts of information. It goes back to the educational issue in a way. In the car crash, when one drops out of the space of goal-directed behavior, I'm driving here, I've got to get there, I shut down a big part of my brain that is actually processing these connections. Some are related, some unrelated, all the time. So for me, a lot of the interest is trying to reintroduce the spaces of perception where the non-instrumental can regain some kind of valency in relationship to the instrumental. My critique of a lot of recent education policy and pedagogy has to do with that lopsidedness.